Hey, what is up guys, I'm KVHD here. And fun fact, my second most viewed video of all of the past year was the one that I made about this guy the Xiaomi Mi Mix. That video got a lot of attention. In fact, a lot of you guys were asking about it since it's been about a year, if there would be some kind of a follow-up or a sequel to that, and there is. And this is it. This is the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2. You see, the thing about the original Mi Mix was as beautiful and awesome as it showed up on video, I don't know if that really directly translated to sales. I mean, at the end of the day, this is still a pretty huge, unwieldy phone for a lot of people. It's still running a ROM that's pretty unfamiliar to a lot of people that aren't in those Asian markets. So even though it did have an awesome, super thin bezel, sweet form factor that helped move the needle for the entire smartphone industry, like we see in 2017, people weren't exactly rushing to uh, import this into the US and buy it and actually make it their daily driver. So that's where Mi Mix 2 comes in. So pretty much every single change that Xiaomi made from the Mi Mix 1 to the Mi Mix 2 is to make this a more approachable, more buyable sequel to the phone that made such an impact for them last year. So right off the bat, the Mi Mix 2 is smaller. So it's rocking a six inch OLED display, but of course keeping the signature tiny front and side bezels. So it's a huge display about the same size as the new iPhone we're about to see, you know, 5.8 to six inches. But of course in a footprint that's way smaller and easier to grip even with one hand. And the six inch display, even though it sounds big for a phone, it's in that tall, narrow two to one aspect ratio. So it's gonna be easier to reach the sides and the corners than your typical six inch screen. Not all six inch displays are created equal. A lot of people forget that. The body is now ceramic on the back and aluminum on the sides. Uh, so it's still that super shiny, fingerprinty, slippery finish, but is also a bit heavier than normal phones of this size. So ceramic is a really dense premium material like we talked about with the essential phone and it's packing that as well. But really all the placement of everything, the buttons, the ports, the speaker, is all the same because the body is smaller, so that just means everything is easier to reach. The only difference is just that they got rid of the headphone jack this year. So essentially now that they have everything from that original phone in a smaller, more compact, more reasonable size, what they did was basically a once over of the entire phone to take anything that was a little bit extreme to make that original design happen, and bring it down to earth. So that piezoelectric speaker at the top of the old phone that had to vibrate the whole front of the device to make sound, that's replaced by an actual real front-facing speaker and earpiece up at the top of the phone. Much more practical, directional sound, much more useful. It still has the ultrasonic proximity sensor firing through the glass, so that's cool. Uh, and the selfie camera is still at the bottom in the small chin, but they coated the glass in a slightly more polarized shaded way. So it kind of, it's darker and it, it sort of blends into the front of the phone more and it's harder to see. It's a nice touch that adds to the seamless feel of the phone and doesn't seem to have any impact on the camera's performance. And they did upgrade the camera on the back. So it's now a 12 megapixel Sony IMX386 sensor with optical image stabilization, uh, an f2.0 aperture, and still inside that 24 karat gold ring in the middle of the back of the phone. So no dual cameras on the back of this guy again, but it's definitely an upgrade in the camera department, even if it's not quite to the level of what Samsung and Apple are doing right now. And the fingerprint reader on the back is also now even faster, like it's super fast now, which is confidence inspiring. And of course it's now in that ideal location for one-handed use since the phone's smaller, and it's still in the middle of the back. And on the inside, you have some pretty op specs right now. Snapdragon 835, six gigs of RAM, up to 256 gigs of storage, and a 3400 milliamp hour battery. So with all that refresh in the hardware, which is pretty impressive, it basically comes down to whether or not you can stand the MIUI software on top of Android, that ROM. Uh, and they have added a bunch of new things in these updates to make it more accessible, but more importantly, more familiar. MIUI now has a split screen multitasking mode. So this is something almost every phone now has except the iPhone where you can do two apps open at once. That's been added and it's pretty simple to use and works well. So you can really take advantage of the big screen. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised it wasn't on the original. Uh, there's still that quick ball that moves the bottom row of shortcuts anywhere you want on the display in case the corners of the six inch panel are still kind of hard to reach. And it's overall cleaned up. It's pretty snappy. It doesn't have much bloat, not many bloatware apps. And it's honestly already gotten one software update since I've gotten the thing out the box and hopefully it continues to get more. It's on top of Android 7.1.1 right now. So pretty standard for new phones coming out right now. But I think the benchmark is just how fast they move to Android 8.0. I'm kind of having tabs on all the big phones to see how fast they do it. But wait, there's more. There's also a Mi Mix 2 Special Edition. Here it is actually next to the standard Mi Mix 2. 
Surely you can tell the difference, or probably not. <laughs> the special edition, basically instead of rocking the matte black aluminum sides, has curved the ceramic all the way over around to the front. So it's a ceramic unibody phone, which is actually kind of amazing. Uh, and then it also has eight gigs of RAM. So that's what makes the special edition super limited, a little more expensive, hard to get, also harder to grip, that's your call. So a lot of changes that are comfortable and make a lot of sense for the Mi Mix too, that I think they're hoping will get people to go from drooling over the Mi Mix to actually buying one. Obviously 2017 has been this year of, of disappearing bezels on the front of smartphones. I made an entire video about that, but I think the changes they're making are more to just put it on a global scale. Now this supports a massive amount of bands, 37 bands total, 22 of those being LTE bands. So the goal here, it has a dual SIM card slot. The goal is that you can put your SIM card in this anywhere and it'll work, including here. So to mix or not to mix. That is the question that I'll pass on to you guys. But either way, that's pretty much it. The new iPhone's right around the corner. New video on that coming very soon. Be sure to subscribe to see that if you haven't already. Until then, catch you guys in the next one. Talk to you later. Peace.